Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, Deconstruct. My name's Charlotte and I do DIY and sewing videos. Today, we're gonna try to recreate the Jacquemus Lamai Poe sweater. I'm probably saying that wrong, but it's the cardigan that has buttons going diagonally down the front of it. Super unique cut, super cute. I wish I could buy one, but it's all sold out in the white color, which was on Essence for a while. Um, I think last season, but completely sold out, can't find it anywhere. And I also just don't have $310 or whatever the resale price is now. So I'm gonna try to recreate it out of this oversized H&M knit sweater that I have. You can see it's a pretty loose knit, very drapey, very oversized, as you can see in the try-on clip. I'm basically drowning in it. The sleeves are way too long, the body's way too wide, but it has a good drape and it's still a knit fabric, so hopefully it'll translate well into the Jacquemus sweater. So that's what I'm gonna attempt today. I'm gonna try to get it done in just one day because I wanna shoot it tomorrow now that the weather is nice. Um, so yeah, wish me luck and let's get started. <laughs> first things first, I'm gonna disassemble the sweater. I wanna take apart the sleeves from the torso and separate the front from the back so then I can cut out my new pattern pieces. I didn't plan a pattern for this, so I'm using another shirt to help measure. I'm just winging it really <laughs> and hoping that it turns out well. So this is the length that I want the top to be and I know it has to go on a diagonal fold my top on over like so so it's on a 45 degree angle and then i'm just gonna cut it along this line right here this is kind of scary because once i do this i can't go back here's what the top and bottom pieces look like and i'll be serging the open diagonal edge to prevent any further fraying Next, you'll want to take the serge diagonal edges, fold it over about half an inch, and sew it down with a straight stitch to create an area for the buttons and the buttonholes. So this is what the edge should look like with it folded over and sewn in, and you just want to do the same thing on the other diagonal side. This is what it should look like with the two diagonal edges finished up. At the shoulder seam, you'll want to overlap the two edges and stitch it down to form a one clean shoulder seam at the top. I think before we move on to the buttonholes, I'm actually just gonna like baste the diagonal opening together. I wanna finish off the sleeves, um, any of the ribbing and stuff like that with my walking foot on my sewing machine right now. I'm just too lazy to switch it on and off with the buttonhole foot. So we're gonna do that first. We'll come back and do the buttons as a last step. Okay, let's go. Using a sweater that fits me fairly well, I'm going to lay it on top to help trim the pieces to fit. First by taking off the excess on the sides of the front and back pieces and making sure to leave some extra room for seam allowance. For the sleeves, we're just gonna take it in a lot on the serger. I think that'll be the easiest way to do it. Here's just a quick sleeve try on after I pinned it. I think that will be good. I think I have quite a bit of room under here. The sleeves might actually be a little bit short now that I'm pulling the shoulders up a bit further, but that'll be okay. I can get my hand in and out of it fairly easily, so I'm just gonna take it to the serger and then just serge off all this excess. So for the sleeves, I ended up extending them with some leftover fabric. I forgot to film it, but you'll be able to see it in the final try-on. So next I'm just gonna do the shoulder seams on both sides to secure at the top. When sewing the shoulder seams, I added an extra support in the form of an elastic to prevent the fabric from stretching out with wear. It's easy enough to do, you just wanna lay your elastic directly on top of where you'll be sewing the shoulder seams and just stitch it in as you're stitching the shoulder seam. All right, shoulder seams are done. <laughs> Took a while. So I already pinned this armhole in. You can see I tucked it in, and we're just gonna sew along this line. Mm -hmm. 
So here is a quick try on. This is what it looks like. I still need to sew the sides together, which I'll be doing next, but you can see I have this basted together. I haven't put the buttons in or the buttonholes. I know the sleeves aren't perfect because like I was running out of material and stuff, so they're not done super well, but I think for the general Jacquemus vibes, it's working. This knit's kind of annoying to work with. You can see it's very loose of a knit, so trying to sew it, it's uh, not very secure and I have to go back over it. Using the serger is a bit better, so we're just gonna go and sew up the sides. Okay, well that wasn't recording, so that's great, but I uh, surged up the sides. It's nothing special. Y'all didn't miss much. So just be careful on the side of the diagonal that you don't sew both of the pieces down, um, just the side that's relevant, so. To finish the bottom of the top, I'm just gonna trim it based on where the diagonal ends on this bottom piece and I'm just gonna cut straight across. For the corner opening right here, we actually wanna fold this part in a bit. So it creates this V shape on the end right here. This is where I marked it for where my buttonhole will be. So I'm just gonna leave a little bit of room right about here. So to finish off all our raw edges, all I'm going to do is serge everything here and then I'm going to tuck them under and then hand tack it down. The bottom is all hemmed. I'm just going to hand stitch it a bit later since the final step is here. We're back to doing the buttonholes. If your machine has an automatic setting, that's the easiest. If not, you could painstakingly hand stitch the buttonholes as well. That's also another option. Um, or you can manually do them depending on your machine. So my machine automatically does them. I'm just gonna do it on a tester piece of fabric, which is gonna be this little piece that I have already and test it out and then do it on my top. I only found four of these in my stash, so it's perfect for this tutorial as we only need four. So I'm gonna lay these out approximately like so, and I'm gonna measure how far we need each button to be. I think they'll probably have to go more like this. Okay, I revised it a little bit. I ended up making this four and a half inches in between each button. The tricky part is to do the button holes. We're gonna be using this handy contraption, the button hole measuring foot thing for my machine. And all I have to do is place the button in here and it will size the hole appropriately once I have this set up on my machine. I'm taking a washable marker. I'm going to mark where I need the button holes to be. Let's give this a test. test it and it's a little bit tight because I did make it smaller so I might make it just a smidge bigger okay the result was pretty good on the tested piece now that that's been checked I can do it on my real piece so all the button holes are done this is what they look like a stabilizer in the back I think that will help it a lot because this is like a stretchy material that's the four of them i'm gonna trim off the back here and then open these up and start sewing on our beautiful buttons next i'm just gonna take needle and thread and hand stitch these buttons like to test my buttons and there we go how cute is that oh my god i love these buttons they're so pretty so 
So all that's left and remaining is this surged hemline. And what I'm gonna do is fold it on to the inside and I'm just gonna take needle and thread and hand stitch it for a nice clean finish. And you can't even tell that there's any stitching done. So I'm just gonna do the same thing all along the bottom hem. I'm not gonna bore you with it on camera. I'm just gonna do this off camera. This is what it's starting to look like. I still have two more buttons to do, but I'm gonna do that off camera. And I'll be back to show you a try on of what this looks like. <laughs> thank you guys so much for watching i hope you enjoyed the tutorial if you liked it please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing and down below and if you recreate this sweater or any of my other diys please use the hashtag deconstruct so i can find all your lovely recreations i love what you guys make and i'll see you guys next time in another video bye oh no i